several years ago when home theaters were becoming a thing, and this was a point when people were using larger screen TVs and setting up rooms specifically for watching movies and things like that, and they called that the theater. Well, at this point in time, it had progressed to where people were using uh, projectors and projecting onto larger screens, creating rooms dedicated for home theaters. So I decided to build this one. Now, when I say a few years ago, it was a little longer than I had thought. It was actually back in 2004. And in 2004, the iPhone had not been released. YouTube had not been started. I built this theater using hammers and nails uh, because at that point in time, using cordless drills and cordless screwdrivers weren't even a thing yet. Um, so all I have are still images. Uh, I hope that you like what you see here. Uh, you can see the workflow and the, the process that I went through to build it. So maybe it'll help you in some way build your own theater. If you like anything that you see here, I would certainly appreciate it if you would subscribe and hit that like button. Thanks for watching. I want to give you an overhead view of the area that we're working in here. Uh, this is looking straight down into my basement. You can see the stairs leading to the upstairs. The grayed out area is the area that we're going to be focusing on and where I built the theater. For the next few images, I show some overhead views with an arrow that indicates the direction that we're actually looking at in the basement. The finished theater turned out to be about 14 feet wide and 22 feet long, I believe, and I wound up with a ceiling height of 8 feet. I was targeting the 16 by 9 aspect ratio for the screen, which turned out to be 10 feet wide and a little over 5.5 feet tall. In this image, I'm actually doing some testing with a projector to get an idea of the placement for it and things like that. The image shown there is the 4 by 3 ratio and doesn't fill the 16 by 9 screen size. Here again, I'm just kind of getting a feel for the layout of the way the chairs are going to be within the room there. Uh, plus, my son was overly anxious to play games on it. The next several images shows the room from different angles and different views, just to kind of give an idea of the space I was working with. In this image here, you can see where I had to relocate the incoming water lines to move the valves from out behind where the screen was going to be. Something I wanted to mention about this image here is you see the water on the wall in the corner there. That water came from me working on the water lines. I built this house several years ago and this is a totally dry space and had been the entire time that I lived there. Now since this was such a dry space, I wound up using spruce for all the framing in it. Uh, now I know there will be some comments about how I should have used treated, but I didn't. I used spruce. I wanted to have stair step type seating just like theaters do. Here I am doing some of the layout work for those stair steps. I created each level of the steps using 2 by 6s and on top of those 2 by 6s I used 3 quarter inch plywood. I wanted to be sure and have plenty of leg room between each row of seats, so in these pictures here you can see us giving it a test. I then started building the second level right on top of the first level. It was built exactly the same way as the first.
Here we are again testing out the spacing for the seats. Finally, the third and final layer. In order to keep the ceiling as high as possible, I rerouted all the ductwork along the upper sides of the room. Something else I did is that when I attached the 2x2s to the walls, I left the bottoms and the tops open. My thought was is that it would create a drafting effect and allow the walls to breathe. In this image here, you can see how I created the channels that would house the ductwork that was running around the perimeter of the room. You can also see that we've started the insulation at this point, and I insulated everything except for the concrete block wall areas. As I said earlier, I want those areas to be able to breathe. Here I am trying to complete some of the ductwork. Uh, yeah, I know I reduced the efficiency of those two lines, but it still worked fine. Now it was time to start thinking about the wiring. I wanted to make sure everything was in the right location, like the sconces, uh, the light switches, and things like that. So I put those boxes in and then ran wires directly to them. I also wanted to mention that I created dedicated circuits within the main panel of the house, strictly for use in this theater. I failed to get any images of the actual sheetrock work, but you can see how it turned out. In this image here, you can see the area that I created that would house all of the audio and video equipment, as well as all the light control circuits. I'm sure that they make specific paint for the screens, but I used a pure white eggshell finish. For the walls, I selected this dark, deep red color. I have to tell you, I had to paint that room about five times to get it to coat properly. Here's another view of the control panel I mentioned earlier. I wanted to be able to control all the lights individually, and that included a ceiling light, sconce lights, screen lights, stair lights, and control panel lights. Here it is getting closer to finished. At this point, I've painted some of the trim work you can see I have the sconce lights up and the drop ceiling in. I wanted to say that that drop ceiling I held as tight as I could to the floor joists up above. Some of those panels I could barely squeeze in. Here's another view of the uh, finished control panel with the exception of the trim paint. Uh, at this point I had a DVD player in there and a 5.1 surround sound system. You can also see the uh, dimmer switches for all the lights. This area changed some over the years. I ultimately did away with that DVD player and went with the PlayStation 3, I believe it was. Here I'm experimenting with the lighting. Uh, I have the uh, screen lights on there. Uh, you can also see the left front and right front channels of the surround system along with the center channel down below the screen there. Here I'm adjusting the projector alignment. You can see that it's actually projecting a little bit low in this image. Here you can see the projector manage the ceiling. That was an in-focus projector. I think it was 720p. At that point in time, that was a decent projector. I did ultimately, though, go back and replace that with a 1080p one. The rest of the images are just images of the finished theater under different lighting conditions and different test videos. We wound up giving this theater a name from one of our favorite movies at the time called The Princess Bride. There was a segment in the movie where they talked about the pit of despair. And that's what we came up with, the pit of despair. If you liked anything about this short video, please leave a comment in the section below. And do me a really big favor, hit that like button and subscribe. I really would appreciate it. Thanks for watching.